All right, hello people. Today we are going to talk about the uncontrolled and the controlled inputs with React. So a lot of time you will deal with form and some inputs and you need to know the difference between controlled and uncontrolled. It will depends on it will depends on the situation, all right? The situation. So we do have a pretty simple form with la label right there name, input, text, email input email and a submit button. So this is really the basic form. All right, so first I will show you the control input, control input. To do that, we need to import user state from React. And this is when, for example, you are creating a blog and you want the user to be able to write some blog post and to show him what is uh, writing, okay? Uh, so when, when you want him to, 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 to see what's going on, to see what's going on with its blog post, it can be good to uh, add some controlled inputs. So right there, we just create const and right there, I could put some imp data, set imp data equal user state. And that will be an object with the name and the mail. Okay, because right there we do have a name input and an email input. All right, then we need to do the two ways that are binding. We need to link the input and the state with two different ways. So first I need to link it with the value attribute value. So for the first one equal imp data dot name indeed. And for the second one, it will be the email. Okay. So right now, if I put something right there, it will just write it first because the value is linked to my uh, state right there. So this is the first way that we can link those. And then we, we need to link with an event with the unchange event. So unchange will trigger uh, handle inputs, for example, function. Okay, so we can just put it right there and right there. And we need to create it. So const handle inputs equal uh, E, we will take the object event, the event object. All right, and so right there, um, okay, yes, that's working. And so right there now, we need to change the state accordingly with the input, all right? So for example, right there, if I just log E, you'll see that it's already working. If we just refresh it and I wrote here, you see that it will trigger my function. So I need to say if E the target that's name equal name. So for the first inputs, I will use set imp data and I will uh, change the state with a new object with a new object. And I will take e dot target that value. Okay. And for the mail, I will just keep the imp data dot email. All right. And guess what, we can do exactly the same if e.target.name equal email, we will just change that. So we can copy it, paste it, and name will be equal to imp.data.name and email uh, will be equal to e.target.value. Great. So this is the two ways that are binding with the controlled input. We need to link the input and the state with the value attribute and the unchanged uh, event listener attribute. Okay, so unchanged will be, will be triggered every time I write something in my input. Okay, in my inputs. So right now I can just log my imp data, for example, and I will just refresh it and I will just do something like that. Great. Okay, and let's imagine I write something. You see that it's triggering my state and it will refresh everything uh, every time my state change. Okay, change it, uh, change, change, change it. All right, so this is the controlled, uh, the, the controlled input because it will be controlled by the state. And so right now, for example, if we are in a blog, we can, for example, go uh, down and we can say, um, yeah, just H1 and say imp data dot name, for example. Okay, so I will just show it right there. And uh, my fabulous blog, you see that it's working, I can see what I'm writing right now. So if you need to visual visualize your state, 
it can be a good way to do uh, things. So you need to use the controlled event, uh, the controlled inputs. But sometimes, and a lot of times, you don't need to see those data. For example, when you are dealing with an authentication uh, system, okay, you are using Firebase and you want to do an authentication, you don't need to show the password right there. You don't need to do anything. You just need to check if the value are good or not. So we don't need to link the, the inputs with the data in that case. So we can just, you, uh, so you can just keep it if you want. You can just, for example, uh, copy it. And I don't know, like, paste it right there and uh, just comment it with control KC right there. If you want to keep a track of, of well, what we just done, okay? So I will just delete it. And so we can just delete the user state. We can just delete the state right there. Okay, the handle inputs too. We can delete the value and uh, we can also delete the unchange. And this is our bas basic form. Okay, so in data, I can also remove the H1. So this is our basic form again. So to have uncontrolled inputs, I will need another hook, which is the use effect hook and use ref. Okay, from React. The most important is use ref right there. It's used to make references. So it's used to select elements with React. It's more performance than just use the document.query selector with React. Okay, great. So how it's working? Well, const imp ref or name ref, for example, equal use ref. I will just uh, trigger it, execute it. Okay, and now I need to put a ref attribute whenever I want to reference my element. So whenever I want to uh, select it. Okay, so a ref equal name ref like that. Okay, but if I log it. I will have undefined, so I will just log it. I do have an object. So the selection is placed inside a property, a current property. And okay, if I just refresh it, I do have undefined right there because it will execute my use ref and it will try to log it first before returning or executing my GSX right there. Okay, so it will just return undefined. So I need to log it after my GSX has been passed. So for example, use effect and it will be triggered after the first render and right there I can log my ref and I can see that I do have input name so it's great I can have the value I can have the everything I want okay from the DOM all right so it's working it's working great and there are also another trick with ref which is when you want to have multiple ref let's imagine you have 100 inputs you are not going to create 100 ref like that it's not really smart so you can use a function for example const add input equal l and if the element we want to add exists and if it's not already inside of my ref so uh, exclamation mark imp ref dot current dot includes l then I want to push it inside it, imp ref dot current dot push L. So now we need to make our ref start with an empty array so we can push it inside it and we will call it imp ref with an S since it will be for multiple inputs. All right, add input right there. And so right now you can just put that method that will be triggered every time you want to use a ref like that okay so sorry but i've just pressed um, the shift alt tab with prettier so you see that it's it's uh, it's like that okay great so now we should it will just trigger that function every time we want to create a reference so you can just copy it and paste it below yes all right so we do have an error name ref is not defined indeed where is name ref? oh it's right there so i will just log imp ref Okay, great. So name ref is still not defined. Okay, that's working. And I can see my current and my two inputs right there. Okay, pretty useful to know that kind of trick. All right, all right, but it's not done yet. How can we check for the value with, for example, Firebase? Well, I need to put an unsubmit on the form. So when I submit it, I want to handle 
my value. So unsubmit equal, for example, handle submit. And now I need to create it indeed. So const handle submit equal, uh, don't forget to take the E parameter right there, the event parameter, and prevent the default behavior because we don't want it right there. And then I can do uh, whatever I want. So just uh, I will just check for the value so I can send the value to my backend, I can send the value to my server or to Firebase or whatever. So right there, I, I will just uh, put a log, but let's imagine it's the verification function, all right? So log, and I can log the imperf.current.0, so the first input dot value. Okay, so I can, um, oh yeah, let's use the template string to do something beautiful. So yes, value right there and template string again, template string again. So I can put, for example, a name right there and I can put a comma and I can put a email and impref dot current dot one. Okay, the, the, the second element uh, dot value. Mm, yeah, inside it dot value. All right, all right, great. And so now I can just uh, refresh everything and I will enter my name Enzo and I will enter test at test.com and I will submit it and I do have my value right there. So I can send the value to a server or whatever. Okay, so this is the uncontrolled inputs. You see the difference? You don't need to link it with some state. It's kind of, it's not easier, it's, it's just different, okay? When you don't need to uh, see uh, the, the different data right there, when you don't need to handle those in front hand, uh, well, you don't need to use the controlled input. So you can use the uncontrolled input with a reference and then with a simple unsubmit, you can uh, submit whatever you want. All right, follow me on Instagram. I just opened an account, account uh, on TikTok too, uh, where I publish some shorts on TikTok. It, it's working, it's kind of working. So follow me there too. And uh, yeah, indeed, follow me on YouTube and like the video if you liked it. It. All right, see you in another video. Bye.